Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Nias Hawkins is with us in the building. Great to have you here, Hawk. Oh, man. Thank you guys for having me again, man. This is an interesting time of the year. Uh, take us back, you know, obviously the last two years there's no lift for life. But at this time of the year, July, training camp is three and a half weeks away. What are what are players doing right now, and how important it, is it? Is there a fine line between keep working but also taper in such a way where I'm ready to go for camp? Yeah, so you know the summertime is a is a grind by nature, as you may imagine, uh, especially with Chuck Losey at the helm now. <laughs> uh, him and his mustache, they're really getting after things. Um, while most people are spending their July Fourth, you know, eating hot dogs with their families. Um, those guys are going after it, uh, conditioning, a lot of individual drills, player-led type of stuff. But like you said, preparing for camp. Um, and there is a fine line. There is. And the coaches kind of have implemented a program in which, you know, you still work hard. But when it comes time to get your legs ready to play football, uh, they do a good job with that. So definitely a fine line that you got to kind of teeter there. And it's also a fine line in camp itself. Same thing. With about 10 days to go, is it a lot of it about recapturing legs while still staying at least mentally sharp? Yeah. So, you know, we take great pride. Uh, it's a big adjustment at the college level, actually. Once you get to that point where you're you're trying to make it more mental, trying to save your legs, uh, you know, things like walkthroughs, things like, you know, maybe shorts and T-shirts out of practice to kind of take some of the stress off of the physical portion of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, you have to be careful, especially as a young player, to not think of it as a day off, right? You know, you're still going out there and focusing on the mental execution, uh, different assignments you may have, things like that. How long did it take for you, for example, to grasp, okay, mental reps are important. I better take it that way. Because everybody, <laughs> you know, because – like you say, a young player go, oh, okay, good. Yep. It, it, it depends. It's, it's interesting because, you know, every player doesn't come into the same place. Um, right. So for a guy like me, I was not nearly physically ready to compete at this level. So even the days where they were mental, for me, I took it as an opportunity to catch up. Okay, mm-hmm. these guys are better than me physically, but if I really lock in on the playbook now, then maybe it'll pay off in the future. And other guys come in, and typically the young guys you see struggling to, you know, understand, hey, the mental aspect is just as important – are the guys who have been able to fly by just being better athletes than everybody. Um, so you definitely see that with young guys a lot. So let's get to one of those young young guys, a guy that performed during the course of the winter workout and in the spring and impressed a lot of people with Zane Durant. Yeah. When you watched him at that position, since you know that position so well, what impressed you uh, for a young player? Yeah, the, the number one thing, uh, obviously, all kinds of physical talents. Uh, I think we talked about it last time I was here. He reminds me a lot of Kevin Givens yeah. uh, in terms of athleticism yes. and raw strength. And his frame really is similar, too. Um, but beyond that, his mentality was light years ahead of what you typically see freshmen coming in with. He was very focused, a uh, humble kid, eager to learn. And all of those skills really, to me, are going to be what translate initially and what really allow him to you know crack that lineup and see some good time um before his physical attributes are able to take over all right so and then there's a guy that people saw at the end of last year jordan mm-hmm. Vanderbilt. Mm-hmm. uh and by the way impressed a lot of people live for life yeah what makes Van, now vanderberg has, is moving up people don't realize he's from south africa yep. all right so he didn't exactly grow up playing football what do you see in him? Yeah, he is a, a high, high motor guy, and that is what makes him so special. He is really fast, really strong, good de-tackle, but the thing that really sets him apart when you cut his film on, when you watch him in games, is the way he runs sideline to sideline every play. Um, Rob Windsor, I keep referencing old de-tackles, um, but Rob Windsor was another guy who flashed a lot of that same type of motor, uh, and that's really the thing that makes Jordan stand apart, aside from the things you see at Lift for Life, with his raw strength, his yeah. athleticism, um, but that motor is going to carry him in this game for a long time. Yeah, there was a point last year, and he was actually on the scout team, and James made the point, hey, you know what, the uh, more we look at Jordan Vanderbilt, he told the whole team this, yeah. right? He said the more we look at him, the, the more you get the idea he's going he's, he's gonna to move over and start playing. What does that tell everybody about the coaching staff, that it's not just looking at the guys that are in the first two units, they're looking at everybody? Yeah, I mean, it, it's important because, you know, with a big roster, with only so many guys who can play on Saturdays, 
you want to know as you come into that building as a player that you are going to have the opportunity to showcase that you are able to play on Saturdays. The coaches are always looking. Coach Franklin always says everything's evaluated. Mm -hmm. Um, And it can sound like rhetoric, but Jordan Vandenberg is a prime example of that. He was on the D squad. He's a freshman. And pretty quickly, people notice, hey, this kid's special. Uh, And he earned an opportunity to go play at the end of last year. Let's talk about some of the guys you competed with on the offensive line. Yep. Because you had to go head-to-head with those guys along the way every day. Mm -hmm. Give me a couple names that stand out to you that that bear watching in camp for all of us. Yeah. uh, Number one, uh, I'm going to throw them out there, Juice Scruggs. Yeah. um, Hands down, the hardest interior offensive lineman I ever played against. Um, Tough kid, smart, athletic. Uh, You're going to see him take a huge step forward this year. Had a good year last year. Um, other guys to know, Salim Wormley, who we were missing last year, um, yeah. you know, before he got hurt, was really, really taking huge strides. Uh, great punch on him, great interior guard. Uh, but there are a lot of guys on that offensive line. Olu Fashanu, uh, Landon Tangwall, Nick Dawkins has made huge strides. Um, but that looks to be a, a group that's widely improved, a lot of veteran presence there. I, I think I, a lot of people realize that. Salim Wormley had won the left guard spot. Yeah, it was his. And I say that with all due respect to Eric Wilson. Yep. Okay, yep. And Eric did a good job. But Salim won that. Yeah, And that's a tough blow for an offensive line when you lose a guy because cohesion is so important, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, all right. So, I mean, it's, Juice Scruggs has gone through a lot to get to this point. What did it take for him to actually rebuild his body after the accident to get him to the point where now he is a mountain of a man? Yeah, I mean, you, you people always want to talk about the physical aspects. Um, and, of course, that's a part of it, rehabbing from injury and the situation he found himself in. Um, and he did that. But in order to get there, to, to overcome such a big injury, I keep talking about the mental aspect. That is the most important thing, yeah. to show up and go to rehab every morning, every afternoon. When things don't necessarily look like they're going to work out, Juice was a guy who never lost his confidence and his belief that he was going to be a special player regardless of the circumstances that were thrown his way, and that's why he's thriving now. All right. How important are teammates in a journey Oh man, when you take? Because everybody – now, obviously, I see more than everybody. I understand that. So that's probably why a lot of these questions I can ask. Um, but people see Saturdays. Mm-hmm. They don't see Sunday through through Friday. Not every day is a great day. How important are teammates in getting you through not every day is a great day? I think it's the most important thing. Um, just in my experience, you know, having guys like P.J. Mustafer and Odafe Owe and Nick Tarburtons, you know, because like you said, every day is not a great day. It's a grind. Um, a lot of times, if you look at the whole mountain that you have to climb, it can be discouraging. Um, And situations are not always the best for each player. There are a lot of guys to please on the team, and everybody wants to play. Um, So really having your teammates to lean on when things get hard, um, you know, it keeps you going. It keeps you going. It motivates you. You see guys going through similar things that you're going through, and they're fighting through it too. And that brotherhood, that camaraderie, to me, is the most important aspect of a team. Um, And when you see guys who may not look like they have a great opportunity to play and they're still grinding the same way that the starters and the captains are grinding, that is how you tell when a team is getting ready to have a special season. And that's something I, I've said. I think a lot of people have made the, this observation, so what I'm saying is not going to be unusual. But to me, I've always felt teams were able to thrive when your hardest worker was your best player. Yep. Uh, and I, and that's, you know, we saw that with you know, the Saquons before you. Yep. Uh, but saw that with Saquon. Hardest worker. Uh, yep. Well, if he's working like that, right, and – and sometimes coaches will drive the hardest player to let everybody know that, hey, I'm driving the hardest player. Yep. Uh, I mean, it, it does make a, a big difference. I got to ask you about Dawkins mm-hmm. because Hawk and Doc, Hawk and Doc, the, 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 the podcast, uh-huh. by the way. What's made him? What's made him fun? And by the way, it's one of the coolest things I've seen is here. Just a very subtle how he took his dad's number. Yep. And he's got 53 on now. Yeah, no, Doc is he's a great dude. Um, you know, as a player, he's really grown up a lot. Uh, came in, obviously, you know his family backstory. You know the gene pool he comes yeah. from. Um, but everybody develops at different times, right? And offensive line specifically, you know, playing center, it's a mental and physical game. It's, yeah. it's, it's warfare in there. So it takes a lot of guys a longer period of time inside to be able to develop and play. Um, but that kid has a big personality. Um, the guys in that room gravitate towards him. 
um, which is important, especially when we talk about the center position. Every single play, they're communicating all the checks. Mm -hmm. Uh, They got to be smart kids, which Doc is one of the most intelligent football players I ever was around. Um, So I I think he's getting ready to be special. Um, And he's a worker, too. That's another thing. I've I've seen that kid. You know, when it comes time to go, I see him watching those Daryl Dawkins highlights in the morning, (laughs) and I know Doc is about to put a show on in the weight room. Um, So, you know, Doc's a good dude. That's my guy, my roommate. Yeah. Well, interesting, too, though. It's not just center. He can play both guard spots. Yes, he can. Too. I mean, can he play tackle? Yeah, but he can play both guard spots. Give me the importance of versatility. Oh, man. On the on the offensive line, especially because I've seen over the years that look it'll come time there'll be an injury. Yep, they want to play the five best guys, not the next guy, just the next guy up. Yep, especially at O line, um, yep. you want to be able to put your best guy in and versatility, um, especially a guy in Doc's position or a guy who has been in Doc's position. You know, when that opportunity comes up, you want to be able to be versatile so that when that opportunity comes. They're not passing over you and going to the next guy. Uh, so he's a guy, like you said, can play all three spots, could probably play tackle. That kid is a true 6'5", yeah. uh, long arms and athletic. So, you know, it's, it's super important. And obviously, just from a team perspective, a guy goes down, which is typical in a physical position group like offensive line, you want to make sure that you have adequate guys who can come in and keep the ball rolling. You should be doing this for a living. <laughs> I, I want to be like Mr. Jones when I grow up. Everybody listen. I've been saying that for years. <laughs> By the way, uh, Baker Mayfield was just traded to the Carolina Panthers. Oh, man. Goodness gracious. All right, for a conditional pick. I'm sure the conditional pick is they win the Super Bowl and it's a one. Yep, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but he just became a Carolina Panther. So so State College is Matt Rule. Yep. Yep. Uh, now has uh, Baker Mayfield. Go hang out with Etor Gross Matos and the gang. Man. There you go. And, and Brandon Smith. <laughs> yeah, and Brandon Smith. And Smith's down there, oh, too. Oh, man. Yep. Hey, he wants, he wants to do this, right? He's already better than I am. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty close. All right. Hey, thanks so much. Mr. Jones, Great thank to you. Have you here. Yes, sir. Yes. See, another. See, I couldn't get. I can't break Stoll as saying Mr. Jones. I can't break Hawk as saying Mr. Jones. No, no, right? that, that day will but, never come. But see, but that's. I, I did explain yesterday when I've gone back to quote my old neighborhood. Now I don't go back there any you know any longer only because my both my parents have passed. But same thing. I would see people I don't know, five six years ago and go hi Mr. Thomas hi Mr. Ruah. It's mm-hmm. the same it doesn't right it doesn't go anywhere it doesn't it doesn't change I still same same as these if, guys if my mom turned on the radio and heard me calling you anything other than Mr. Jones I'd have to answer for that when I got <laughs> off so <laughs> that won't happen that I know <laughs> that I know from your mom.